All right, YouTube, it is Hobo Swim. The last vlog I did was a little bit of a comical update on the COVID-19. Uh, today, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more serious about uh, some of the things that we might foresee in the future after the whole quarantine. That coming up right after this intro. Cue intro. All right, y'all, we all know that the mom and pops businesses out there are probably gonna suffer the most. They don't have the huge clientele as these big box stores do, or huge corporations do. And after this is all over, everybody's gonna have to rethink of how they do business. Everybody's going to have a new norm. And some of the old traditions may come back into play. Back in the old days, we used to have people that would bring the food out to your car uh, at a grocery store instead of you taking it yourself. Um, there were times that you could call ahead and get your food prepared for you. Uh, you pay for it at the store and your, your bag boy brings it out and puts it in your car. Well, we've expanded upon that and it's doing it online instead of calling ahead. And some are actually delivering it to the house. That's nothing new. Deliveries have been something that were done a long time ago. Milk was delivered to the house. Uh, groceries used to be delivered to the house. You have to remember back in the days when uh, mom stayed at home and was a uh, stay-at-home mom, a, uh, hate to say housewife, but a homemaker, as they would call it, she stayed at home with the kids. She would uh, do the things around the house and groceries were delivered. Usually there was only one car for the whole family. Now we have multiple cars. Everybody goes out and works. There's a lot of single parent uh, families now. And uh, we're still finding it hard to get into that grocery store sometimes to do our basic shopping. People are finding going online, purchasing what you need online, and going to the store to do the pickup. That is not a new concept. It's just new ways of doing an old concept. It's more traditional of how it used to be. One thing that I don't think we'll see again is full service gas stations. Gas stations are still gonna be pay at the pump. You get out of the car, you put the hose to the tank and you pump it yourself. Uh, I think full service gas stations are a thing of the past, but that would be something great to bring back. You don't have to get out of the car. And then you just put it on the tab. That was something that was very common. You just sign, and at, at the end of every month, you paid your bill. But something that is a new concept for many of the mom and pop businesses out there is getting online and selling your product through like Facebook marketing or through Etsy or eBay or getting a, an Amazon uh, storefront. Some of these businesses are going to have to go into that uh, field 
to continue on because there are many people in the last two months that have sat around at home and realized hey it might be easier just to get it online and uh, not have to deal with getting out I personally like to see and feel and try on or test something out before I purchase it these past two months yes I have done a lot of stuff online buying stuff online and I have returned a lot of things online because it wasn't what I was expecting an example of that is I purchased some bar stools for counter height bar stools for my new home and when I got them the bolts were cheaply made uh, I broke two bolts by hand just putting them together now I was aware ahead of time that they were not going to ship these fully assembled it makes more sense to ship them and I have to do the assembly but this is definitely a product that would have been better suited uh, assembled in the factory rather than the customer doing it especially if that customer doesn't have the proper tools to actually assemble a product like that and that has been something that has been pretty consistent with some of these online uh, stores in the last couple of months people have bought a lot more through places like Amazon but yet they have also returned the level of returns for these companies has been much higher and that overworks the UPS USPS and FedEx folks when they receive those products back they're opened boxes they can't resell them at regular price and most of them are probably either damaged they may be missing parts they can't resell this to make a profit so they lose out on that product and they have to pay for the shipping to come back where are they getting that money to do that they are losing However, if some of the mom and pop companies that are out there would get a storefront with Amazon, knowing that your product is a lot better than some of these products that are out there that come from overseas, you know that you have a motorcycle store and you have higher end product there market your product that way market it online this is a product that's made in the USA the leather is far better than the leather that you're going to get at competitors pricing we know that your prices are going to be a lot higher something else that's probably going to have a different outlook uh, as soon as we come back to a new norm is going to be how we do meetings with businesses how education is done we are finding that there are great resources out there for continuing the education within the home and having some continuity between the classroom and what's being done at home. Teachers are very much aware that some of the students out there have surpassed their parents' knowledge in the content areas such as math or reading maybe science or even history um, this is a great way for the teachers to get out there and assist with homework it is also a great resource for business leaders to get out there to the community 
and they can reach more people with these online meetings. It may be a great resource for community uh, leaders, such as your city hall uh, meetings, city council, to do the online meetings and the people that have jobs that don't allow for them just to take an hour or two out of their day to go down to City Hall and be a part of those meetings, they might be able to pull out their phone and watch the meeting and maybe even chime in uh, if they're on the docket to speak. Um, you know, we're going to see a new norm. I definitely feel that that's going to be happening. Going into a brick and mortar store, uh, you know, it's great to have them, but I feel like the brick and mortar stores are going to turn more into the online. And if you're not going to make that paradigm shift in the way you do business, you may find that you're going to have a hard time with business. It's unfortunate, but this may be the very thing that changes the way people shop. People have been forced in the last two months to shop this way. Even if it's people that have always liked that face-to-face -face contact with the representatives or the associates and that may be something that you can add to your business instead of just posting something online and having someone purchase it you can actually have a meeting with a person online and have a face-to-face -face virtually to discuss what their needs are like say someone wants to go buy a new uh, lawnmower and they don't know exactly what they need for their yard they want to know what's the best product for the best price someone that's out there looking for that say new boots for riding uh, or a new leather jacket for riding and they just don't know what the product is that sales associate or the store owner can easily get online, have a Skype chat or a Zoom meeting or any of these Google Meets, any of these platforms, show the product to the client, discuss some of the pros and cons of each product that they have and, uh, you know, help that client make the best decision. I used to work for Sears, and I know that a lot of our returns that came back to us at Sears was because when the person came to purchase the item, they didn't have a good idea of what they needed. They had an idea of what they wanted. And when they got it home, it didn't meet their needs. So they returned it. As a sales associate, my first job was always to find out what they needed and try to find out what they wanted and see if we could find something that's in between. I used to sell tools and garden equipment and uh, exercise equipment and I would have sales associates that worked with me that were all about the high dollar and what kind of commission they could make so they would definitely try to get those people to buy that high dollar item and then come to find out a week later they're bringing it back because one it didn't fit the house uh, or two, it was just too advanced for their needs. If somebody came in needing a table saw and they are just a hobbyist, they're only going to use it to make birdhouses. 
I'm not going to sell them the professional line Delta table saw. I'm going to sell them the entry level. They don't need a $700 table saw to do what a $100 table saw would do. Now I know today you can't buy a table saw for $100, but back then you could. I had people that would come back to me because I had that personal touch. And you can do that online. You can explain to them the difference between each product. I had to explain to people the difference between a direct drive table saw and a belt fed. What is the difference? One is it's not as loud. Two, you have better torque. You have better power. Uh, you might be able to get uh, attachments for the belt fed that you can't get for the direct drive. And if you're going to do dados, that's what you need. Uh, if you're not doing dados, you're just cutting cross cuts and rip cuts, uh, simple projects. Get that $100 entry level. You don't need anything more. Businesses are going to have to conform to the new norm. Uh, and think outside the box and quite possibly create a new norm in how they do business. Another business that has really had to kind of think outside the box and uh, redo the way they do business is car dealerships. And I really like what they've done. They've kind of taken the Carvana way of doing things. Uh, you look at what they have online. Uh, you do your comparison shopping at home. Uh, pretty much you know that the car, if it's brand new, it should run and everything. And, you know, there's really not much of a test drive. But what they're doing is they are allowing you to look at everything online and then they bring the vehicle to you. If you need your tires rotated or balanced or new tires or oil change or new engine, whatever, you know, you call the service center, they come and pick it up and uh, go from there. And they're adding this as a service that doesn't cost any extra. As where before this, that kind of service would have cost you a lot more. One thing I didn't understand is how all of these restaurants out there just closed their doors and decided not to do anything. You look at companies like Chick-fil-A that just kept their um, drive-through open and continued business as normal. McDonald's, Burger King. Of course, you had your pizza joints that stayed open because they had delivery. But you had these local businesses, these local restaurants that shut down their doors. It doesn't matter what type of restaurant you were, they just shut it down and didn't do anything. There were companies like Texas Roadhouse that sold their stuff curbside. You call in an order or do your order online, then you come and pick it up and do it curbside. Or they even emptied out their freezers by simply offering the ability for you to order their raw steak and cook it on your own grill. That was a great idea. We went and purchased, uh, I don't know, a, probably six, maybe 10, I don't know how many uh, steaks from Texas Roadhouse. Uh, and we just put them on our own grill. Cost a lot less and you get a great steak. And I'll tell you, my steaks don't taste anything like theirs when I grill them, but it's a quality uh, meat. It was companies like your local pubs and grills bar and grill. You don't have to have the bar section open. 
just keep your grill section open, sir, from the from the street. That could have happened. One of my favorite pizzerias closed down. They didn't open up for anything. They didn't do deliveries. They didn't um, do curbside. And they didn't try to sell off their goods that they had. I'm sure that the cheese, all the sauces and stuff like that, it's probably spoiled by now if they kept it in a refrigerator. I mean, the stuff's only good on the shelf for so long. Uh, the stuff that they were able to keep in the freezer, it, it's probably kept, but the stuff that was in the fridge, that's gone bad. That's the kind of things they could have sold off curbside. Then you had some companies that decided, you know what, we're going to close our door. All of our food that would spoil, we're going to donate that to feed the children or the homeless or those without jobs now. We're going to set up and cook this for y'all and uh, you can come by and pick it up. I loved companies like that and I can guarantee you companies like that when it comes back to where you're opening up your doors people are going to remember you you marketed your name even while your doors were actually closed to business you were marketing your name that was thinking outside the box and it was doing something great for humanity one of the bike shops uh, that i used to live near when i lived down in dublin the owner of that shop, he may have closed his doors, but he used to sew on patches. So he took that, uh, that sewing machine that he had, and instead of sewing on patches, he started making face masks. Now, of course, so many people made homemade face masks, and then there was the whole issue of, oh, well, these homemade face masks, they don't work. Y'all, I'll go ahead and tell you, it doesn't matter how much you're filtering. If you're filtering nothing, then, you know, you're doing nothing. If you got something covering your face, you're filtering something. I mean, it may not be very good, but at least there's that possibility of you not catching it. I've looked at the whole face mask issue kind of like you would an oil filter. You got different quality oil filters. You got some that, you know, are like K&N, high quality, high performance. And then you got your, your Walmart brands and things that, you know, you wouldn't even put on a go-kart engine. Face masks, I would say are a lot like that. You got your great ones that are out there, and then you have those that you know, aren't going to filter a whole lot. But let me ask you something. Would you stick a bolt into the plug of where a filter would go on your car and not filter it at all? Or would you rather have a temporary fix of having a cheap oil filter on your car and go the distance that you need to for the moment? You know, you can always put a plug in there and, you know, just simply block where the oil would go in and out of an oil filter. You can do that and not filter your oil at all and have the nastiest stuff and eventually your car will break down. It will die. Or you could use the worst filter out there and uh, at least have some protection. No one's saying that you've got to get the K&N of breathing apparatuses for your face. Okay? Just be smart. You see somebody coughing? Get away from them. Yard sale. Now, when I go out and I'm shopping during this whole social distancing and quarantine time, 
I might go shopping and there's somebody there that probably hasn't caught on to the grasp of uh, social distancing. What it means to be six feet or more away. So how do you get somebody like that to move away from you? They're looking over your shoulder at the same item you are on the shelf. Or they're right behind you in line and you, they're just not comfortable. You're not comfortable with them being that close to you. It's real simple. You don't have to speak to them at all. There's two things you can do. Two simple things you can do. Cough. People will move away from you if you cough in this time. Number two, and it's always worked, pass gas. People disperse when you pass gas. There has been talk of a new type of handshake. I like shaking hands. I'm just traditional in that way. I'm not bowing like Japanese and nothing against their traditions. Every custom has a tradition. It's their tradition to bow instead of shake hands. But it's my tradition to shake hands. And I like that. Shaking hands comes from an old custom from a long time ago. The reason why we shake hands with our right hand and not our left hand, and why we salute in the military with our right hand instead of our left hand, why we put our right hand over our heart when saying the Pledge to Allegiance. The reason behind this is because most people are right-handed. Most people use their right hand to draw a weapon. Back in the days of when you carried a sidearm or a sword, you used your right hand to draw it. And reaching your hand out without a weapon was a sign of coming in peace. It's the reason why we wave with our right hand. We show people that our hand is empty, that we are unarmed, and we come in peace. Those are the customs that we have right here in America, and they have gone on through many countries. Uh, so, you know, it's not just something that we do as Americans uh, or as part of the new world over here. That's also the reason why it was very customary for a man to escort a woman on his left side instead of his right. And if you ever look at women's clothing and men's clothing, they button up on separate sides. A woman's jacket or shirt will be opened on the left side. A man's shirt will be open on the right side. The left side has the holes and the right side of the shirt has the buttons for a man. A woman's shirt has the holes on the right side of the garment and the left side of the garment has the buttons. That's because back in the day, traditionally, women stayed to the left of a man. Why? Because a man's right hand was used for shaking, hands, saluting, and for drawing his weapon. Nowadays, that tradition has gone by the wayside. We no longer consider it to the left, but the woman is always to the outside of the road when walking down the street. The man is always closest to the road. Just a little fact that uh, is probably absolutely useless nowadays. Of course, most men today, I don't even know if you want to call him a real man or not, but 
they don't escort women. They leave them behind. They don't even care if they're close to the road or not. They don't care if they're on the left side and closer to the heart. So they can use their right hand to salute, shake hands, or draw their weapon. But women in men's clothing, that's the reason why they button the way they do. That way a man can't look to his left and look inside a woman's shirt and a woman cannot look to her right and see inside a man's shirt. It buttons up that way. All right, well, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like it, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell. If you wanna see more videos, there should be one coming up maybe over here, and then maybe one over there. Click on those and see more videos. Until next time, y'all ride safe and always get back home.